Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and I'm here today to actually respond to some of the things or the criticisms or whatever out there that exist for my last video, um, and go into a deeper conversation around the philosophy at Nintendo and why, you know, sometimes it's okay just to admit that a company is no longer for you and they don't need to be for you as long as other people are happy. This is where you start to care about things beyond yourself, which is very hard to do because a lot of us are very inward thinking. We think about what do we want, what do we wish would happen, and we don't consider the wider scope um, especially when it comes to business practices and why companies make the decisions they do. But uh, if you enjoyed this video or my last one or any video I make, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video and all of that because we are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. We do have a big show this summer, but yeah, we'll get more details on that later once we have the official dates for Summer Game Fest. All right, so yesterday I brought up a video that you guys should definitely go watch where I talked about how the Nintendo Switch is actually closer to the end of the generation than the beginning, and basically concluded that we are actually much closer to Nintendo's next generation platform than Nintendo is leading on, and than any of us want to admit to. And obviously this has led to a lot of people um, kind of being upset in some regards about this because it's hard to admit that times are moving forward, that we are moving ahead, that the Nintendo Switch is, yeah, five years old, but it's actually five years, one month, and two weeks as of today. Yeah. Why am I saying that? Because we're actually one month and two weeks into the sixth year of Switch. When you turn one years old, it's not that you just turned one then and start counting. You are now a full year into your life. So when the Switch hit its fifth anniversary, that means it actually just completed five years, which means everything after that anniversary is now the sixth year. So we don't like thinking about this as we age because I turn 36 on July 5th. But if we're honest, I'm actually 35 and nine months right now or 35 and two months and three weeks or whatever the exact date are. But that's how old I actually am, which means I've already enjoyed about nine months of my sixth year on this planet. So yeah, that's just how it works. So we're in the midst of the six year of Switch, and people don't like to think about that because it means we are closer to the end. Six, seven years is usually the maximum on a console generation before we hear about the next platform or they release the next platform. Five years is actually the traditional mark, but obviously we know Switch is going beyond the five years. And by me saying the next generation Switch could be landing in 2023, somehow is this controversial take when that's actually like fitting in with what Nintendo said, and this is going to be a longer than usual console generation while releasing at the end of 2023 would be a longer than usual console generation. It all fits. I know there's the whole middle of the life cycle thing, and we'll talk about that probably again in this video, but I want to go to some of your comments because there's some people that think they could run Nintendo better than Nintendo runs Nintendo. Um, and I, I, I just find this stuff interesting to talk about. And if you guys find this interesting, I, I hope this creates some entertaining videos for your weekend. And by the way, happy Easter today to those of you who celebrate. I know we celebrate. We actually uh, did our whole church thing last night. And then, uh, you know, we got the whole Easter bunny stuff here in a little bit. But let's get into uh, what's happening in the comment section. And uh, you can see that this is the video right here, Nintendo's Next Generation is closer than anything. And, you know, for the most part, a lot of people enjoyed the video. It's not like we have like a mass subscriber loss or anything. Uh, and here's me wearing the exact same shirt I'm wearing today. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm wearing it still right now. But um, here, this comment from Red Crimson really, really is what inspired this video. Uh, so credit to you, Red Crimson, for at least giving me some inspiration. Uh, by the way, I don't want anyone attacking any of these users um, or, or, or be doing anything stupid. Like, they're just having their opinions and are welcome to have them. And he says, when Nintendo... Uh, says they're midway through the cycle. That means they plan to extend the Switch's life cycle past the traditional five-year shelf life for what consoles uh, by releasing an upgraded Switch or Switches with different iterations like the Game Boy and DS line of handhelds since the Switch is a hybrid. That wasn't hard to figure out, which, again, we're talking about the Nintendo Switch next-gen releasing almost seven years. That, that That is past five, but hey, that's neither here nor there. Let's just forget that we all know how to count time. Uh, the Switch now is hella dated. 
and they need to release that new Switch either at the end of this year or early next year, and should be talking with devs and handing out development kits to have all of the AAA games they've missed out on, like Elden Ring, King of Fighters 15, and other genre of games, so when new, more powerful Switch drops, they will have an abundance of games on release to play. Um, okay. I miss the old Nintendo. Nintendo needs more young, forward-thinking presidents, staff, and a CEO that will bring Nintendo games and products to the modern era, which is kind of funny since uh, how we got to where we are today was by Nintendo hiring the youngest president and CEO in Nintendo's history in Satura Iwata, who ushered in the Wii and DS era, but that's neither here nor there. I remember when Nintendo used to be the company coming out with the most powerful consoles, GameCube was, sure, best controllers, exclusive games, and talking to devs on how they could bring Hollywood graphics into games and designing the hardware around that concept, which, by the way, there's not a single Nintendo platform that ever had Hollywood graphics, so I, I want to make this very clear. Hollywood graphics is CGI. CGI has been ahead of the gaming industry forever. Uh, yeah, it definitely weren't ahead of CGI back in the GameCube days, just, just to be clear. Um, anyways, designing the hardware around that concept. Um, I, I, okay. I know I could run Nintendo better than they can, LOL. This playing it safe, cheap hardware isn't cutting it. Isn't cutting it to the tune of, you know, best-selling home console of all time. Nintendo's on top of the mountain, richest company in Japan, billions of dollars in the bank. Their games are selling better than they've ever sold in the history of the company. But it's not cutting it. <laughs> um, they've been doing this for far too long. They need to be competitive like they were back in the days instead of cowering behind outdated hardware. It's, I, it should be all in or nothing. I'd go broke to put Nintendo back on top like they used to be. And that's kind of the problem, I think, that a lot of fans have that want Nintendo to go back to traditional home consoles is we're very inward thinking. He's talking about how I could run Nintendo better than they can, but then at the end says, I'd go broke to put Nintendo back on top like they used to, which means you can't run Nintendo better than they can because you would make Nintendo go bankrupt just so they could have the most powerful hardware on the planet. I don't know where this feels like a smart idea. Nintendo went down that power route, and we saw sales decline year over year over year, and as gaming fans, we don't care, right? We, If you bought, if you own the N64 and the GameCube, you're like, yeah, man, Nintendo was awesome. They were on top of the game. You know, they were great, and it's like, okay, sure, but sales-wise, they were doing really bad. Nintendo was profitable, but only just barely. What they were doing wasn't working, and this was under the Yamuchi family, the founding family of Nintendo, and under a bunch of old guys. It was a bunch of old people pushing Nintendo in this direction, and Nintendo decided, hey, you know what? We can't keep doing this. I'm going to retire, and I'm not going to promote someone within my family. I'm going to bring in someone from the outside who's young, fresh ideas, and could possibly, you know, ha has Nintendo culture in his DNA. He's worked with Nintendo, so he knows the company, but has fresh ideas. So he brought in Satura Iwata. And Satura Iwata ushered in the Wii and DS era, the 3DS, obviously the Wii U that flopped. And then, you know, he, he was the man behind Switch. So, yeah, they brought in young and fresh blood. And this is how Nintendo got to where they are today. They re thunk the wheel. They went, we can't keep doing what we were doing that makes this person in particular happy because it's sinking the company. It's not sustainable. Nintendo needed to find a new way. Instead of grabbing the bull by the horns and going, yeah, we're going to take you on head on and chuck you to the ground and we're going to be the bull. They said, no, 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 no. We're going to breed a new bull. We're going to create our own bull that can exist alongside yours. And you know what? Now that we're sitting here in 2022, our bull is fatter, bigger, and just stronger than your bull. Why? Because our bull makes us more money, makes us the richest company in Japan, gives us the biggest cash flow we've ever had, and it has now caused our ability to, instead of, instead of closing studios and closing office buildings like Sony has over the years, especially during the PlayStation 3 era, Nintendo is building a new billion and reinvesting in themselves. Yeah, they did technically close an office in California, but they weren't firing anyone. They were trying to consolidate the company into a single location in the U.S., uh, and, you know, that just didn't work out for them in terms of keeping all that staff. But the bottom line in thinking about this objectively is Nintendo's bigger than it's ever been, more profitable than it's ever been. They're on top of the world. 
They are the leading platform in the industry. Whether you like it or not, they might not get Elden Ring or Call of Duty. But you know what? What they do get is Mario Kart 8 from the Wii U crying out loud, selling 40 million. Breath of the Wild selling 25. Animal Crossing selling 35 million. 20 plus million in sales for Pokemon games. When Pokemon haven't been able to get to those numbers since Generation 1 back on the Game Boy. Nintendo is on top of the world. Best selling Kirby. Best selling Fire Emblem. And even when you want to say, oh, they're creatively drained, that's not even true. I can argue Fire Emblem Three Houses is the biggest fundamental change to fire emblem in decades and then you want to go beyond that breath of the wild biggest fundamental change to zelda in decades oh you want to go beyond that animal crossing new horizons as much as we might want to be critical of it missing features from prior games the terraforming and the um the ability to craft items are two of the biggest fundamental changes to Animal Crossing to ever exist in the history of the IP. So, look, Nintendo is doing big, creative things with their games. Maybe they're not doing it to the level you wish they would, and maybe they're not pushing graphics and frame rates to the extreme like PlayStation, Xbox, and yeah, obviously PC always has. But if that's what you want, why don't you just go play on those systems? Like, if what you want to play is Elden Ring and Call of Duty and all that, go play on those systems. Maybe you want to play Switch games at higher frame rates. Well, guess what? I hate mentioning it. Go become a PC gamer where you can easily emulate these Switch games and get your higher frame rates and your higher stuff and get Elden Ring, although with a few little quirks, uh, and get a, a majority zone. You're even getting Sony games over there. You're getting Xbox. I mean, PC gaming is really better than it's ever been, right? You get all the PC game exclusives. Now PlayStation's bringing games over after a few years. Xbox brings all their games over. And you can actually play Switch games you know, questionably in some gray areas through emulation better than the Switch. So honestly, go be a PC gamer. It kind of sounds like that's what you want. You know, looking at this comment over and over again, Red, Red Crimson 102, the system you want exists. It's called a computer. Go build one. Have fun. Parts are coming in stock more often now. It's easier to get GPUs today than it was two years ago, than it was a year ago. It's actually the right time to start considering building a PC again. You have the 12900K out there, right? Like pushing you know, gaming to the ne that next level. Even the 5800X3D or whatever pushes gaming to the next level on the Ryzen end. So look, it's better, no, no better time than now to get into PC gaming. And I will always push PC gaming for people that really want something like this because what you want exists. It's just not coming from Nintendo. And what Nintendo is doing is working for them. I'm not sure if you're aware. Nintendo's doing quite well. Now, that's one comment. Let's get to a few more. We won't spend as much on the other comments, but, um, you know, uh, just scrolling down here. And, and, you know, if you guys see your comment, that's really cool. Um, let me see here. Um, people uh, from Juan Garcia says, people have been talking about a new Switch from day one. Uh, there has been some reports out there that have existed that Nintendo's working on a new Switch. For, since day one for six years people have been crying well not six years five, five years one month and two weeks um i love the switch now give us a new one since day one everyone's been crying i'm tired of hearing about it. just shut up about a new switch and enjoy what you have you greeting bastards the switch is a fun system that's all that should matter and uh i i, I get what you're saying buddy but also my video never said i don't enjoy switch my video was saying just a reality check we're closer to the end of Switch than the beginning. Like, this isn't the beginning. This isn't, you know, five five years, one month, two weeks ago. We're in the sixth year of Switch right now. Yeah, we're a hell of a lot closer to the end than the beginning. I mean, it's just based on the... If, if, the, if the Nintendo Switch lasts for 10 years, if they don't release a new next-generation Switch for another five years, I will literally eat my Nintendo Prime hat. I will eat it on live stream. I'll put hot sauce on this bad boy, blend it up, and eat it. I'm not kidding. Because that's how confident I am we are closer to the end than the beginning. All right. Um, Eliza here says, wait, so you really think we're going to get next generation console from Nintendo as early as next year? Yes, as early as next holiday season. Not, I don't think it's launching alongside Breath of the Wild 2, like some people do. I'm, I'm talking holiday season next year. Uh, I initially thought you meant a Switch Pro. Next gen this early, this early was seen as a bit of a stretch to me. And I don't think it can come so soon. I guess you're right that we could see it launch for Breath of the Wild 2, which is not what I actually said. Uh, I was looking forward to a Switch Pro and expected it to launch next year alongside the Breath of the Wild 2. I was expecting next gen in 2024 at the earliest 
But I guess it wouldn't make sense to release a next-gen system a year after the Pro. I guess the console we thought was the Switch Pro was maybe the next-gen Switch. And, I mean, look, going down the Pro road is something I'm, I'm going to try to avoid in this video. I think it's been talked to death. But, um, yeah, we'll leave that for a, a, a live stream conversation or something. I, I don't want to... You know, we could talk about the Pro for another 20 minutes, so I, I really don't want to do that. Let's, let's move on here. Um, how are we reaching the end if uh, when the Switch, uh, when Nintendo themselves says it's halfway through its life cycle, meaning it has three to five years left, the Switch is being compared to the Game Boy of having made it for a decade and having a big life cycle. Now, what's interesting about the Game Boy is it had a long life cycle because it released the light, then it released the Game Boy Color. And if you want to say, well, that's like what Switch did, you know, they have the, the uh, you know, the Switch Lite, obviously, or the Game Boy Pocket, I guess is what I meant to say. Uh, so they, they have the Switch Lite, and then they have the you Switch OLED. That's like the same thing. The difference is, um, this was back in a, a time when we didn't really move beyond the visuals of Game Boy uh, until the N64. So from like the NES to the N64, uh, Game Boy just felt perfectly fine. We're not like that anymore. And Game Boy was a handheld only. It wasn't a home console. Now, when I talk about um, you know, getting to the end in this whole middle of the life cycle. Nintendo said they were in the middle of the life cycle in 2020, 2021, and now 2022. So if we were to believe Nintendo, that three-year period is the middle of the Switch. That would tell you, you know, okay, fine. If that's the three-year period, the middle of the Switch, took three years to get to 2020, that gives us three more years, right? So 2025, and don't get me wrong, I've been on that train before thinking, okay, 2025 is when the next Switch is coming. Problem is, history is working against us, and what the words of the president themselves are working against us. Um, Shintaro Furukawa, the current president of Nintendo, has stated he doesn't want Nintendo to fall off a cliff. Well, what makes Nintendo fall off a cliff? Extending the life cycle too long, to the point that you don't have a bunch of games coming out at the end of the life cycle, killing the platform before we get to the new one. That has been Nintendo's M.O., for 30 plus years and he wants to buck that trend he wants it to be more like sony where you know what you release bangers in the final year of your platform while you're launching a new one tends to work out for sony as almost every platform they release moves 80 plus to 100 plus million units that's where nintendo wants to be they don't want to be the platform that milks it until there's nothing left to milk and then hope they can recapture you know what's more profitable than milking something until you can't sell a single unit anymore making sure your unit sales never drop below 20 million a year by releasing your next platform the moment switch is going to do that and if we think switch is on its downward trend now that last year was the peak this year is going to be really strong in 20 plus million again but next year has a threat of going under 20 million then guess what you release your next platform that makes up the sales you lost and then kicks off killer sales in 2024 you know what's going to sell even better in 2024 having an entirely next-gen platform for that whole year with new gaming experiences and big third-party games coming over, not trying to still sell the Nintendo Switch that year when they might not have any games ready to go. So, yeah, I, I'm just... I'm, by the way, they'll have games, some games ready to go. But you know what I mean? Like they're, they're, it, They'll do much better with new hardware um, heading into 2024 than they would heading in with the same Switch. Now, this is just, again, based on the entire history of Nintendo. All right, um, heading on this list... Um, Nintendo upgrades over six years. We to Wii U was six years. DS to 3DS six years. 3DS to Switch six years. It's their normal cycle, and they are doing the same as they always have, except they have learned that Zelda is a system seller. Again, I, I don't I don't buy into the whole new system coming out with Zelda next year. I could be wrong though. I mean, that's you know, none of us really know. Uh, when Nintendo says in the middle life cycle, I mean, they mean the family of systems, so they aren't technically lying. And you could you could argue that that's really what Nintendo means is the whole family of systems. Um, you know, and then it goes into the NVIDIA leak and other things that kind of point to another system coming. Um, same doc as the old. This is a common. This is partially my fault um, because I, I couldn't figure out what the chip was inside the dock. It turns out it's just a, uh, it's not an upscaling chip. It's a chip for HDMI 2.1 that enables 4K 60 FPS output. It's not a chip that has anything to do with actually upscaling. This was a, this was, this is my fault for that misinformation being out there. I look it up quick part numbers before the video and everything and it just i wasn't getting the information i wanted so i made some speculation that maybe it's an upscaling chip it's not um david a GLC, and this is what i've been saying maybe 2020 was the middle possibly um 
and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you guys kind of get the gist of it. Obviously, that one comment was the big one I wanted to make a video on today. You guys let me know if you find these kind of videos, these more discussion-oriented videos fun. If not, whatever, maybe we'll do less of them. But I, I, I find it a lot of fun talking with the fans and, and talking about these uh, more controversial topics, I guess we can call them. Is that is that what these are? I don't really think it's... I never really thought saying the Switch is closer to the end than it is the beginning and, uh, you know, next gen's closer than we all realize was really that controversial. I thought that it's supported by the history of game consoles. Like, there was a comment I read uh, where someone said, oh, provide me proof. Like, proof of what? Look at the entire history of game consoles for every company. That's your proof. I don't need Nintendo telling me when the next gen's coming when we have evidence of the history of Nintendo to tell you when it's coming. The Game Boy is like that one exception out there. And even then, most people consider Game Boy Color to be a new generation device. A lot of people think it's ridiculous that Nintendo packed Game Boy Color in with Game Boy. But that's neither here nor there. That's a debate for another day. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Nathaniel Rubble Jance, and I'll catch you in the next video.